and in the naked light I saw ten thousand people, maybe more, people talking without speaking, people hearing without listening. No one dared disturb the sound of silence. Fools, said I. You do not know silence like a cancer grows. Hear my words that I might teach you. Take my arms that I might reach you. My words like silent raindrops fell and echoed in the wells of silence. Sixty-four, folks. 1964. Not a thing has changed. We call them now the echo chambers and the wells of silence that this Internet has been provided to us to become. The distraction. The divisions. This is BTW RLM 306. For those of you on the past post, cast, recasts, whatever you find. For the content. Help you search it out if you don't, if you're somewhere else, maybe into the future. And hopefully the uh, record will be available uh, as long as you keep donating. I mean, this is the month of the donations. I was a little bit remiss to not advance that last week. We'll do it again right up front here now to the RLM, to keep the RLM servers and hardware and things going on. I understand that we've had quite a few generous people showing up to do that, and so I thank you very much for all that to keep us going, we'll keep the word going out. And really, I just look at, for my con at least my content, um, I focus on what I do, so I can't help but uh, believe, in, without any feedback in the, in the contrary, that I'm putting out is probably the uh, best type of information you can have if we're going to cease to be the constant crickets. We're going to start standing up, something that was uh, perceived way back in 64 to be written as a song. See, society is that way. It's going to be coming around and around and around. And we haven't changed. And into my dismay, it hasn't changed. And most, at some level, it to my disgust as well, if we really want to claim that we were people that were evolved in, into a new way of thinking in the world. We're watching the very, the very thing that everybody you know, wants to deny exists coming on us because in the way I see it is because no one's responding at all. And I say no one, but there's a few, but they're not enough. They're not, I, I pr we can prove it, I think we'll prove it a little bit today. It turned up again in the, uh, at the miners, uh, district, miner, Jefferson Mining District meeting we had. A new, new report, a new uh, article came out, completely blindsides what we've been doing. But it's not unseen because, uh, in, re in regards of how the government's situated. But it does show, y'all are infiltrated and surrendered. The cancer grows, folks. The same cancer that's destroying your way of life in the United States of America is the one that uh, that grew in the silence. The sound of silence, the crickets. I find that's amazing how it all comes around. And we still sit silent to it. It's, I guess I sit here thinking about this. I get kind of a, start thinking about stuff when I start talking, but I shouldn't maybe. Donations. What you can, folks. It just keeps the servers going, the hardware. I understand uh, we're getting, we got a lot. I don't know if we've got enough. If you consider the breakdown of the hardware that Grimner keeps for the RLM, for the archives and stuff, keep pitching in. We only do this once a month in February. It makes it real simple. All the bills apparently come due about this time. And so, if you can, you know, Grimner's got a lot of uh, places, of things you can use. If you've got crypto coins, he's into those, taking those. You can do PayPal, which is, I guess, preferable and the easy, probably the easiest. Uh, we, yeah, the, we still have that account, I guess. I guess we haven't been uh, censored from there. And that's going to be one of the tricks, folks, as we go deeper and deeper into this nonsense. It's stinking abyss. We're sliding in, folks. I don't know how we're going to stop. I really don't see it. I know how we're going to stop, but it, I don't see anybody um, doing what it's going to take to get the cart back on the, on the right path. And then driving it where it needs to go. It's just, I just don't see it. And I haven't been seeing it, but I keep wanting to believe. I want to believe, folks. And all it's going to take, it's overnight that this thing is done. And yet it, it doesn't happen. And it doesn't happen in the face of information like I see here, which just astonishes me. And please do not, ex ex not think I'm speaking politically here. I'm talking about um, how a people got together over time that we've kind of walked into. We were born into it. 
a situation in the world that was really different. If you look around, as I relate it to property land law, the uh, different, completely different in how the world worked relative to just people. Because a lot of remember, this was all the people. Might was right. Who, if you were the strongest, and then you had the bloodline of the strongest. And you got a lot of people that you told were you were the strongest because your bloodline was strong. Then you you were the ruler of everybody, and that ruler owned everything, even your wives. And then that ruler was subject to whatever invasion would come by another force that would want to take it on. It's like the jung, uh, you know, dog eat dog, cat eat lion, tire down lion. It's a, it's just a law of the jungle. And then we put this thing together called the international law, so called. It's just a name. And it was an agreement between the kings that how they would not surprise each other because it looked bad and it was bad and it would turn things around pretty quickly. And they agreed amongst each other if they did certain things amongst each other, then they were then the kings were free to turn domestically and attack their own people, whether it by taxes or whatever, or theft, whatever, under other color of this authority they had because the might was right. And supposedly we came to the United States and said might wasn't right, law was right. And that the law of the land was going to rule. And then we forgot to notice that someone came on, some organization, a private organization, foreign to the people in that establishment, brought something uh, called a brand called the rule of law. We're not going to be law now. We're going to bring on this thing that we're going to, we're going to rule. And yet there's this basic law in the, in the United States of America different from all history and everywhere we look regarding the land. Not the law of the land, but the land. And that did offer, a, well, it offers a measure of protection if you'll stand together and use it and hold it against those that will come to invade. And that ends up being this government. And more so today. We've got over evidence over and over and how dysfunctional this whole thing is. And a lot of it, remember, we had the republic that we had to keep. And I don't think we've done it. And I'd, I'd be hard-pressed to have, I haven't seen anybody describe how we've kept it. And if we haven't kept it, then... I ask you then to revisit what you think you live in and what you think your opinion about that might be and how effectual you are in that if it's changed. And I don't see many people really doing that seriously. And what they end up doing is they think about it, they create the myths in their mind, and they go down and they hold their myths because it's too dangerous to, to think about the reality that may be, be that we have something to do. And we're back to the crickets. The idiom of the crickets. So here we have right inside this, I'm not talking political politics now, I'm talking, I'm showing you there's evidence in the world, uh, notice to us that things are not too cool, and any of one of you can step into where, where you're most powerful to deal with some of this if you can, or not, or figure out there's a problem there, put it in a place and go find some place that you can work locally, because I think that's really going to be the bigger issue. We're going to see a little bit of that today, I hope. But here we have a story coming down, and I just was stunned by this, in the in the idea that you... You know, we look out and we talk about all the problems, the coups that are going down, the bloodless coups, the bloody coups that are all going down around the world, and the United States of America is is instrumental in all of that. U.S. aid is not. <laughs> in fact, you're seeing going to Venezuela and the overthrow going down there, the bloodless coup that's going on right now. There, U.S. aid is instrumental to bring aid to Colombia on the doorstep of Venezuela under the under the label of humanitarian. And so right away we get it, we have to understand, and those of us, those of you that listen to me, you know this, the terminology is critical to understand, and it, it runs cover for crime. But when I heard, so, and I've also told you on the international stage, be careful that you don't, you dismiss what's going on out there, because what's going on out there is like a carnival mirror. And I put the carnival there because it doesn't reflect, what's out in, out in the world doesn't reflect clearly as the same thing here in the United States, but it does reflect a condition which is contorted by the carnival mirror reflection to be things that are happening in the world outwardly. Remember I've told you, you, go, you point out, you're going to have three fingers pointing back. The, the reflection of your actions reflects back by your actions. You know them when you see them. All this stuff is there to tell us how to, how to start to really critically think again, to reorient what we're looking at, and then hopefully we take our own requirements because it's, almost like self-preservation at that point, to figure out how to survive it, and more than just giving into it to be run down by it, and then being given, you gave again, you gave, gave your freedom to the extent of the one that's in power, the one that's going to, the power is the one that can hurt you, that they won't hurt you, 
And that's where you start making your decisions, which is not living free and not living within the scope of any idea I hear of anybody uh, talking about and can't get there because it's all just a myth because the reality is there's this occupier and there's a m bunches of them actually, different layers, and they all end up, end up being tied to the same one, but that's so far down the track I never get there. I wish I could get there, but we'll never get there. And we're not going to get there as long as we see this kind of thing going on in establishment. The carnival mirror of what the destabilization of the United States does is the reflection of what's happening in, inside, inside this establishment. Some of you will say, great, this is, being, this is destroying the government. It's not. It's causing a chaos in the government, which is going to cause some other problems. It's not going to solve the problems, it's, but the internal power is going to stay in control. But you see the problem on the face of the ship of state. There's a mutiny on the ship of state. And I've really not heard anybody responding to this in any substantial way. Certainly not the MAGA, the USA, USA folks, uh, those that uh, consider the United States of America to be some shining place with, the, with its minor faults. Folks, this is a major fault. We have a title on the law article. McCabe says DOJ discussed recruiting Pence for a push to remove Trump. This is the Department of Justice, the executive part, part, uh, part of the executive branch, conspiring a coup, a soft coup, with the vice president to throw out a sitting president. Whatever you think of them, just look at the, the establishment. That I, I was, I'm really just shocked a bit that we didn't hear a bunch of people getting arrested up for this soft coup. It's almost like you've seen what's happened in Venezuela. The guy that the United States recognizes, which has no legitimacy whatsoever, is being propped up as the as the uh, uh, president of a state that doesn't exist yet without right. It, it, I, I see correlations. Of, it means it may mean nothing, but the analysis is sitting here. As I tell you, what's happening out in the world is actually happening in the United States, and folks don't see it. You see, you think that the you know Detroit being destroyed economically, you think the destruction of all those buildings, it's a slow motion explosion going on. You don't recognize it as the slow motion explosion, explosion that happens in other countries when you go and see Syria and all their buildings are blown up. But this is a global con construct that's coming on us, and it's by, done by by war situations, and they'll they'll deny it's war, but you heard last week we talked about the military looks at all tools and, as a weapon. And finances is, is one of them. Economies is one of them. We know that. We just, but we tend to not think of it important uh, that it's important. McCabe says DOJ discussed recruiting Pence for push push to remove Trump. Uh, within the Constitution, there's a way for this to happen. It's a bit complicated, but it can happen. And so there's an, a mutiny on the ship of state. And I don't hear anybody going down for this. Now, how you kind of look, maybe a lot of people, in this, particularly on this network, I would think, or some of them on this network, would say, great, that we're seeing the de demise of the government. Uh, I would ask us not to look at that, because if you don't have a better place to go, this is serious and a problem, and not going to be resolved, because you just see the state, all those statists lost. There's a reality that's coming that people, I don't see, the mimetic, the mimetic Twitter is showing me those that think they know will bring out a truism and not have it attached to any contextual reality. That's where the failure is. And this happens, I think, on every point I've watched. I'm really disappointed in the mimetic response of social media. It's telling me something. i got to watch it. It's like the train wreck happening. I've got to watch it because i got to keep track. I don't know that this is over for us. So I've got, someone's got to take track, a keen mind, a keen critical thought about how this is all working. There may be a chance in the in the chaos in order to straighten it up. I don't know. But it's not looking good. And we have a mutiny on the ship of state, and I don't hear anybody talking about some overthrow. I mean, uh, not overthrow. Well, I hear the overthrow is happening, but inside the ship of state, the establishment, we're having people conspire a soft coup against the sitting president. is isn't different than we see the United States doing to everybody else. And so you're looking at the war inside the system. Now, that should have been stopped. That's not a republic if you can keep it. They're not working for you. They're working for them. That's another clue. And that's what the reality is. So if we can go talk about all our, our isms or truisms, we can go talk about our utopias, our myths uh, that we invent. There's a serious thing happening that's uh, playing out, and it's not playing out the way it ought to if law was ruling. And that should be a serious concern. It's certainly a serious concern for what would I do, because that's we're trying to reassert law 
and it's getting a lot of resistance. And everybody, I see some people in the chat room and just put, oh, law, what's the law? What's the law? Well, you don't understand law. So you deem it as a, because your experience is one that's being used as a weapon against you by the government, you don't understand what it was really supposed to be. And so I don't even have to, I don't even engage that nonsensical review, view of it. It's not even a re relative to anything that uh, is relevant, pertinent material to really looking at the problem and trying to figure out where in it are we going to solve it. You either live by an objective basis and everybody t agrees to that or you don't. It's really simple in that regard and for this purpose behind the woodshed that I can only spend so much time on all this. Again, I spend so much time talking on this and just barely touch anything. But we just watch, we're watching the airing on 60 Minutes. Andrew McCabe, the former Deputy Director of FBI, recounted a Justice Department plot to remove Donald Trump from the office in a television interview that will air on Sunday. It may have done it already. I don't know. This, uh, this may be coming on. I don't know. You can go maybe find it. Previewing the ep next episode of 60 Minutes, Scott Pele, of the correspondent at CBS, said Thursday that McCabe told him about a plan to approach Pence, the Vice President of the United States, and ask him to revoke the 25th Amendment. There was a meet there was meetings at the Red Justice Department to which it was discussed whether the Vice President and the majority of the Cabinet could be sought together to remove the President of the United States under the 5th, 25th Amendment on the program this morning. So I guess it would have been aired already on the 20. It doesn't matter. Let's stop here. Okay, so you have the FBI. It's supposed to be a criminal or, uh, investigations organization who you know is turned inward. Uh, that's, who you, that's you now. They're after you. And uh, now they're also sitting and going after sitting presidents. If, uh, if that isn't something that should be actionable and on the tips of the tongues of everybody in the United States about the problem this is for everybody else and whether or not you think justice can happen if that doesn't show that it's not and there's no accountability yet I really, I'm back to the crickets I don't even know what to say to people you can't dismiss stuff like this people will and I mean, I hear, I even hear the chat room, you know, some of the people in the chat room, I can hear their, their I can't hear their voice because I don't know what they sound like, but uh, I, I can see they're typing, uh, some of these people that would respond to me, and, oh, this is a great thing. Ka this chaos is showing us a serious defect, and it's been happening for decades. This is not just happening. This has been the control fight that's coming out to the surface. It's the boil, is, is the, the pus is coming to the surface. The stinking abyss is issuing out a stinking stench. For us to see what's inside, it's been always going on. It, it means that you all lived in an illusion and continue to live in the illusion that you don't want to care for. Something I've been writing about for decades now. I've been talking about it. I've been driving, trying to drive it home the last 10 years on broadcast. I've been trying to show you at least the, even the soft way in to understand and start to at least address some things. We've risen to the point that inside the executive branch, you have a coup going on, and we don't see, we don't hear squat about dealing with it. Now, there might be some stuff silent, but this is not, this is a thing that outwardly should have been identified. And then you see this type of coup inside. You start to see that the, the system has been taken over. It's consuming itself inside. It can't work for anybody else. And then it's susceptible to special interest. If it's susceptible to fail the oaths of office to work up a coup, invent one, and try to get conspirators, conspiracy, conspirators together to do it. You're not getting the government that you are supposed to keep. It's gone from you. It's gone. Your Second Amendment's probably not going to fix this one either. Try to figure this one out if you've got a Second Amendment uh, idiom in your mind. I think it's just a big idea, idiom. It's just like the crickets. It's an idea. It, Lincoln told us how it failed, and no one wants to believe that. And over my decades of research, I've been looking around and saying, well, how do we go through this shadow of, valley of the shadow of death? Because that's what the reality is. And at some point, you have to take on the chameleon. Uh, to get passed through, you have to take on your own, your own good disguise. But you never move from the path, the, the narrow path that gets you through the valley of the shadow of death. Anyway, I just was stunned that we have a, I don't even know why this story is being told, but there's a, it is. And that's good enough for me to see that we have inside interests that are really not following what they were supposed to. We see no accountability. And so when we look out in the world as us, the people of the United States of America, and I'll tell you anywhere else in any other country, certainly under the rule of law, 
you have to start to consider that uh, we've lost absolute control of this thing, and the private interests will uh, will are are winning at this point and getting their way with us. And then we see this this report come over. When you see this uh, mutiny on the ship of state, that's in a context of the military as well. Uh, and then we I noticed this little story came up. Some of you may have read it, uh, heard it. Netanyahu asks Arabs to, quote, advance the common interest of war with Iran. Now, this guy Netanyahu has a lot of influence on the United States and the sitting president as well. The problem is they weren't going to, the, the coup isn't going to overthrow it for this problem. There's another political, this, now it is political inside their decisions. I'm not looking at that. I'm looking at a destabilized government. And I'm looking at an insurrection inside a destabilized government, a destabilizing government. And then we have to wonder as people, what can be good for us? And I'm going to show you that, I hope I can, I've been showing you, it's nothing good for the people. So you can keep going rah, 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 USA, USA. You can say, you can be anti-Trump. You can be anti-government. This thing is rolling out to hurt everybody. It's been rolling out to hurt everybody. And it's not going to do it locally. So when they get the local government screwed up, then the, then the internationals get to come in and start picking the bones. And they're doing that. It's already in the government, and it's all becoming too. But Netanyahu asked there to advance the interest of war. There's a big deal here on the point of him declaring war on Iran. This little pipsqueak of an occupier that has no has proven no right to be where it's at is declaring war on states. And again, the victim, they claim, is the one that gets attacked. This is the tactic. And we've been told about that tactic, too. I think that's in the, in the um, Protocols of the Elders of Zion as well. If you just look, there's a map on what they're going to do. It exposes our human frailties that will accept all this nonsense and how they're going to go do that to you. And how they're going to make other people that should be protected the, vi the villain. And, they're, and, the vi and the criminal, the psychopath, the, the, the criminally insane are the one that get protected. So we have a government that's destabilized, and it's destabilized by the same uh, promoters of Netanyahu inside this government to destabilize the United States of America. And as long as it's destabilized and not functioning correctly, uh, the rats will play. That's the only thing I can figure out here, if not worse. So we, we have a, and they, and they tried to cover this up, what he said here, this Netanyahu was want, wants to band together Conspiracy, another conspiracy out there to go war on a country that hasn't attacked anybody for a few hundred years. All part of this this carnival mirror approach of what's going on outside is reflecting the desta the destabilization of the United States of America, and there's a def many different levels as to how that's going on. And I'm sitting here, you know, kind of twiddling my thumbs. I work the, with my colleagues and the people that email me that are working on their projects, where just they're just a handful, and I can work pretty well with going through the steps and getting stuff going on and we start to move forward but there's just not enough it needs to be a whole nation of people just fed up with it not because we're a liberal not because we're a progressive not because we're conservative not because we're um, Christian or Muslim because we have a thing in the United States of America at the point of the land and the law on the land and the rights of property to people and there was supposed to be a trust set up and a confidence set up that it would be a trust that was set up to protect us in our mobile, in our property, in our well, we see the preamble that's been destroyed, but it's still there for us to enforce. This is for everybody. So we start getting into our little factions and our beliefs and our little nonsenses um, and nanities. It, we're we're falling into the hands of those that are trying to run a coup on the United States of America right now without accountability. And so if you're not going to get accountability at the highest offices in the government, where, do you get, where are you going to get your, that for you? And if you continue to go day by day to say that that's okay, then I don't understand about you. What, what is your complaint again? I, keep, I can't get past this. When we have people that are foreigners, and this is not un, untold because I told you the Bar Association was a foreign organization that took over your country. They took over each state, and now they're taking over. They took over your country, the members, and other things. Those, that's the start of it. That's how, how this whole thing works. In fact, I think they're under license of the military occupation. So that's why I alluded, I've been alluding to for quite a long, long time. But I don't want to go there because until people start seeing more of the substance, you just argue with me or you just dismiss it or you just uh, throw your hands up or whatever. 
you know, I've told you before, it may be something too big to attack to it. You've you got to actually go into this thing and look and see, well, how do we take that down? We may not be able to attack Goliath. We may have to figure out a way to sniper him. But what is, to, what is it to do that? And then this whole thing is sitting on, this whole thing, this construct sitting on a stinking abyss. It's going down, folks. Where are you going to be when it starts to go down? You think you're going to escape this? So we have Netanyahu coming up saying they want to advance war. You see, the the policy of the United States is to go after and make it tr make trouble for Iran. I'm not talking the politics of all this. I'm not talking about supporting Iran. Uh, the I'm talking about being uh, well the the principle of don't go out and and uh, and make you know into foreign wars. Do not interact in the in the United States. Don't interact in the world in negative ways. And that's all we do anymore. I say we, this country. These people that are run coups on their own selves because they don't like the way the sitting president. And I and, I'll, and I'm not too thrilled about the guy, even though he gave us an opportunity. He does give us an opportunity, this guy. But I'll show you how he's not here as we go. This whole political process is no good. The parties are no good. So don't again, do not be think, believe I'm talking in support of anything here. I'm trying to get everyone shaken up a bit to start saying, yeah, this is a whole lot of problems. We better settle back, kick back, and start looking at the reality. What's the reality? Stop living in the mimetic, non-contextual truth-ism. See, that's the problem with deception. It comes with a little bit of truth. In fact, it can come with a whole lot of truth. And that one-tenth of one percent of, of wrong is the one set up to take you down. And you buy into the truism instead of the truth the re and, a, and then applied to a reality and so we have this uh, coup going on no one responds we have Netanyahu said he wants to make war and get all the Arabs together to make war on Iran now you see they're Persians not rare Arabs and there's no right for any of these people to do it but we see, sit quiet and during this time the Senate steps up, and the Senate's going to be a little bit, uh, legislators uh, are going to be a little bit prominent here, and uh, we're watching our our country being absorbed by the, De the Republican Party as well, underneath the guidance of and the demands of the Democratic Party to destroy you, as I've said over and over and over again. United States of America, the people of the United States of America are a candle, and the Republican and Democratic parties are burning, burning you from e either end. It won't matter from which direction and which wing the bird of prey tracks you down on. They burn the candle from either end. The progressives want to do it their way, and the Republicans want to do it their way. And that candle will be consumed by this political party until you understand what the, what the dynamic was, the division that was created by them, and how they mean you no good. And I can now return to the fact of what we did in 2013 in the lawsuit that sued both the parties, and the Bar Association, and they defaulted out. They default judgment in in uh, acceptance of their crime. Literal, this is treason, folks. I don't even know what more to say. A bill targeting anti-Israeli BDS movement raises First Amendment concerns was a story. This is the Senate now doing. This is supposed to be the representatives of your state making a bill. Uh, this ends up being H, uh, uh, SB1. It's the first thing they do. This is supposed to be uh, representatives of your state coming together to make legislation. The first thing they do is they talk about uh, attacking those, um, uh, go back to the states now, attacking, uh, letting the states, uh, giving fair warning that they will not, uh, they will not regulate uh, some state from prohibiting uh, contracts to contractors in the states. Again, well, who, who are anti, uh, is, well, they call it anti-Israel, uh, anti-Israel positioning. So this is not really a First Amendment problem, but people are writing it that way. You've got, they did it really sharp. But what is the state's, the representative of the state, what is good for the state to actually let the state make the First Amendment violation? The federal law is not the violation. It's giving license. What it essentially is doing this is when a, a federal law is made in a subject matter that is uh, given to it by the Constitution, it preempts or precludes any state action contrary to that. The government, the federal government can say we won't legislate or they don't legislate on a particular subject matter, and that allows the states then to regulate in that capacity. This bill, where there appears to be the people are promoting that it's a bill passed in the United States Senate this month that's stirring a First Amendment debate over boycott movement targeting Israel, 
the BDS movement, as it's called, uh, it actually doesn't actually do that. What it does is it removes the, it's the Senate, the representatives of your state. They're saying that the interest of the state to allow the state to not be hindered by the federal government rule that it would prohibit such an action so that the states can do that. Now, what benefit is it? This is how crazy this is. Getting. The representatives of the state are saying, we want to attack the First Amendment in businesses and companies and contractors with the states for services to y'all, whether they're a private partner, public partnership or, or, or not. And so this is a, an interesting misreporting uh, I'm finding on how this is going. But the point is, is that this is, again, the Israel, it's Israeli, not Israel. Israeli influence in your life have taken over your state representatives. Now, the senators are representing the interests of the state. I need to ask, what interest is in the state to make this movement that they would uh, stop anybody and cause a First Amendment violation in the states? Again, the legislation at the federal level isn't worded as a violation of the First Amendment, it seems. In fact, it's limited. It says it doesn't affect it. Again, what it does is it says, we're not regulating that, states. You're free to do this. More insidious. This is much bigger game they're playing. Much finer uh, gamesmanship going on to destroy us in favor of a little pipsqueak occupier someplace that really can't show well, everywhere we've done the broadcast, they have not yet shown a right to what they do. Why? Because they admit they're not the people that they claim to be coming under the color of. What they are is a political movement that started in the late uh, prior to 1900, and a little before that, actually. It doesn't matter. It's not who they say it is who's there. That's why I make a distinction. It's Israeli, not Israel. And I did the broadcast about how to differentiate about that and the timing. So this, the Senate, first SB1, wants to tell the states, instead of doing anything else to help you, they want to come out and tell the, tell the states, we will not regulate this in you to do against your own contractors and companies. And there are already states now with this uh, anti-BDS uh, anti, um, uh, legislation. They're willing already. You want to go states' rights? Well, all you states' rights people, the states are willing to destroy your First Amendment rights. Remember, they're talking about people who speak out. I'm also wanting you to remember, you have the right not to associate. And they're forcing an association, and that's not even been brought up either. My point is, is that we sit quiet, quiet to all this, and it's coming on us. Everything that's quiet here, uh, you think it's not going to affect you. You're now going to censor yourself so you don't fit, so now you think you're all nice and, 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 and covered, because, well, I don't want to talk about that anyway. And you're just giving in to the occupation contrary to the rights that you assert. You're not helping uh, you're not helping to protect that in you. One day, I think we hear the idiom as well, the the statement that you know they came for the Jews or they came for the uh, yeah, they came for the Jews, they came for these, they came for that, then they came for me, there was no one there to protect me. That's how this works. And you give up a little bit more. It's that incrementalism. I keep telling you this thing that was is coming on. They've learned how to do this, and you will allow it. Your, your state representatives, the representatives to the state, not the people, have agreed that they want to impose upon the people, the businesses and the people in their state, uh, to be able to interfere with the First Amendment at the state level. This legislation didn't do that. And so be very careful, again, how you analyze what's going on, and you, make the, you go in and make the wrong end. Wrong, you make a wrong question. As I've told you before, you bring this wrong if you're ever going to challenge it, and they're going to give you the right answer. Then you won't even know what happened. And I have two links here. You can read a little bit about this. And to me, it's, it's learning how they trick us. And to me, it's learning how you understand the battlefield that we're in and learning how the encroachments, the trespasses, the war against us. That's what I tell you about here. How to go and look at these noted, these news articles, these notices, and how they're telling you uh, really uh, what to be careful on and what not to do, what to do in certain ways, or what to be aware of to do. And the point is, it's all to do. You can't just sit and think about it and talk about it, and doing isn't typing uh, keyboard letters uh, in a chat room or getting on uh, on programs or getting in the YouTube and, uh, and and spewing your guts. I've laid out how you start doing this uh, quite uh, well, quite many years now. 
So, is the anti BDS bill constitutional? Is there one in the article? Um, constitutional? Yes, but, and this is the point, you got to be careful on what you're going to do here. The principle was that they're, they've, the federal government has, they have um, said they will not regulate that, and that frees the states up to be able to. And remember, this is about commerce as well. So understand how they're doing this this as well um, in how you would think about this. And here's the point about that. You don't want to be making the wrong discussion and proliferating the wrong discussion and making everybody believe this this Senate uh, act. The first thing they did, not to help you in anything else, they went to help Israel. That should tell you a ton, folks. It's just a ton. I don't even know what more to say. But they're not here to help you. That's the Republican Party. That's who Trump is under by constitution is to promote. And they're in total agreement with this put Israel first, if you will. And do it in a way that you can't be hit with a lawsuit. And if someone attacks you on the lawsuit, they'll lose. In other words, they've, the states, the senators, the representatives have said, we're willing to take this issue up at the state level, and we're willing to waste taxpayers' money on being sued for First Amendment, uh, First Amendment violations. If those come, and that's the other problem, <laughs> nobody really brings it because no one wants to spend the time and money, and who are you going to? The courts of the bar. So you better at least get it so obvious that it embarrasses them if they go against you, as I keep telling you has to ha is happening. So here's the Senate coming right out. What got me here is uh, another story that I'm going to be talking about is that the Senate is doing this to the people. And this is a GOP-controlled uh, body. So if you think the Democrats, all y'all that are, uh, favorable to the conservative or, or Republican uh, party view. If you think that the Democrats are being outed and the only ones that are doing these things to you, they're not. They're the, they're the they're doing it in a different way. They're everyone, the government and those agents in there are doing it to you. You're being done. Like I said, you're a candle. I don't care who you are, where you are. You may not think it's affecting you, but you're a candle and you're being burned. It's just which end of the candle is who is is which is burning you. You're going to be consumed by this stuff. You've got to blow the flames out, and you've got to figure out a way to preserve yourself. So this bill is constitutional because of how it works. You've got to look very careful at the principles underneath why it did it. They're very smart what they did here. You, this is upping the game a little bit. And so if you haven't been following what I've been saying about how to keep up with the battlefield and where it's going... You're going to miss this one, and you're going to think you have all the words, and someone's going to come in one day and just shut you down. Or you're just going to shut up about it. You're not going to talk about it. And then this pro proliferates. And so what is another thing that the uh, the, the Senate did? If you think that the, the Trump's uh, party is going to help us in the, uh, to, to, to hold off the, the progressive govern, global governance initiative, the ones that are promoting uh, sustainable development and all this other stuff on the front, on that front, and you hear it's the uh, good cop, bad cop thing in a way. It's the false antagonist. You see them, the Democrats promoting the global governance, and you see by word that the uh, Republicans are saying, no, you, we're not going to go that far. In fact, they don't have to go that far. They just go a little bit further. They don't ever deny it. And this is where we see this major problem, and this is a, it was a big blow to me uh, for what we do, my colleagues do, and it showed it's not a, not a blow like we could have stopped it because there's just not enough of us. But it was, a, well, I guess, more of a reminder, and that's how I, I, I um, explained it to the mining district uh, at the mining district meeting, was that this shows, oh, see, we focus a lot on coordination. That gives the local governments and, the, and, the, and, mine, and legitimate mining districts a, a power of control in uh, making sure or being a witness to whether or not the federal government is messing with your, your federal lands local to you, you have some control over how that's going to work. Uh, and it's through the process of coordination. Um, so we do that because it gives us where well, we have no other power, real, essentially, anywhere else but to go ask these, these people for permission. Coordination offers something, a, a government like the mining district, a way to interact. And all we do is we just act in witness of the failures to meet law. And that usually is enough. The problem was that it's not it's only the uh, one provision for public land that was uh, allowed to uh, governments uh, to fulfill the Tenth Amendment. What we can't do in coordination is deal with the le the legislature, and this was the weakness 
And this is what we would see. They would do mineral withdrawals, and we would attack the mineral withdrawals, and the mineral withdrawal wouldn't go in. But the problem was is there was those mineral withdrawals were waiting for legislation, and there was never any legislation. Well, we were blindsided. We just got the news. We were blindsided. All this time, the Senate has been working on a uh, like an omnibus bill, big public lands package. The Senate had been doing on and working on the in collaboration. They even admit to it. Remember I told you about collaborations of uh, treason. The method that was used was very much collaboration. Was one of the guys, the Murkowski, admits to this uh, that they collaborated with the. Uh, d Democrats and Republicans to bring this bill on. Now, the, co the coordination gives us an end to be able to stop bad plans. What it doesn't do is give us an end to stop bad legislation or the legislation that goes in to destroy this country. And I say that relative to land uh, law of the land, the land grant laws, the enabling acts of your states, well, the agreements that were there, the, the grant trust, uh, the beneficiaries uh, from that perspective and, uh, and when you look at it that way, we find that there's no power in the government to interfere with certain things in the public lands, which this bill does. And then it tells us some some bad things are on the horizon that we've been recently fighting regarding fire. And so we're uh, going to get to tell you, folks, you're going to watch, unless we can move some stuff through we're, uh, that shuts this all down, even the legislation, you're going to watch fire uh, go. It's going to be a wildfire now, folks, because this bill that they're talking about the major le package, le uh, public lands package that was passed by the Senate. These are supposed to be a Republican-controlled, conservative, production-oriented uh, party. And they allowed a bill that was per brought in, in particular for Oregon itself, that promotes fire resiliency on the, to, to start with. And that's not just the worst of it. Fire resiliency. Why would they allow fire resiliency, folks? When you understand the language... That comes straight out of that fire policy I've been telling you. It comes straight out of what the UN agenda is about. It's completely counter to what the uh, what Trump was saying he would do. Uh, he just made a State of the Union address that said that socialism will not take uh, America ever, and they applauded him. This bill is the Republican Party's contribution to take and put not just socialism on the United States of America, but destroy it through the Marxist part as well. So Trump lied. And so I'm not real happy with this whole thing, but I'm powerless in some regard to do much. We're working, but it, this is a, a real big problem. That fire resiliency, when you know the code words, they're protecting fire as a weapon against you. And this was offered by two senators in Oregon to do this, and this has been what they've been doing. They've also withdrawn mineral lands underneath a cover of wild and scenic rivers, 1,986 miles in Oregon alone. They're going to withdraw wilderness areas across the United States in this package. This is a collaborative between the Republican and Democratic parties to destroy your country. They're taking out the raw materials production capacity of this country. I don't even know, I have to go back and look, I didn't even know there was 1,986 miles of, of uh, navigable river in Oregon. I know one of them was, uh, not, was found to only be navigable to a certain place, so I don't even know how this law is going to apply to most of it. This is how bad this has gotten. Nobody steps up. Well, all the miners, the microcosm of the miner, I tell you, is America. Well, all the miners are focused on a bad decision, on a bad advice by a bad uh, advice from attorney, and going into a courts of incompetent jurisdiction, and uh, don't have, and are certainly going to be giving up the bar association's view, the reflexive view on this, uh, going and supporting all of that. None of those miners came out to defend themselves, and the land that they're now being is being stolen from them to go work. So even if they go and they win the ability to go work, there's not going to be any land to go claim, is what this bill does, National Resources Management Act. It approved 92 to 8. If you think there's any protection by these political parties, this was a blind side to us because we don't have enough people to address it. We didn't even know they were working on it. That's another interesting clue. And all the areas that we were able to stop before from being withdrawn, all the rivers, were all now included without any notice to anybody.
Now, this still has to go through the House, but the House is going to be passing it because it's Democratic control. This is the agenda. They want to steal your land. They want to steal control of the public lands. They want to steal the wealth. They want to violate the obligations of the United States. They want to so bring socialism and more important Marxism, and then eventually it's fascism because they work in public-private partnerships. This is the method. They admit they did the collaborative method to destroy this country. It's the biggest public lands package deal done over a decade, folks. And they, when we looked into it, the, the big deals they want to put in together were recreation, conservation areas, national monuments, and uh, fire resiliency. You don't hear anything about production here. You see conservation areas that are being included. And I've, I've told you before, the non-use of a public, pro, a public uh, raw materials producing land is a war crime against you. Now remember, I pointed over to Israel, stealing the Palestinians' gravel for that one. We included that. You'll find that on Jefferson Money District website, the document that goes to the DEQ for Oregon. You go into the uh, right side where it talks about the conservation of war crime. Go read that document, how that happens. Conservation is a war crime. The Senate just made a war crime on these areas of, withdrew these areas from the, uh, from the people to use and produce raw materials. Recreation is more important than raw materials production. Recreation is more important than all the minerals that make every almost everything you use in world in your life. You all think that you're all responsible for your own stuff. Uh, none of you go mine for the minerals that you're using for anything around your house. None of you. And the ones that might do it do such a small amount. It's probably not the things because how many people have gold that they're using to what? What are you going to use gold for? You make your own electronics. With gold plate everything so it don't tarnish? Is that what you use this stuff for? So, you exist in a raw materials produced world that people like myself do the production. Well, we, we, I haven't been any production because we're involved with the fact that they've been attacking us everywhere we go, but we still fight them, and we still do what we, do what we can, so we, do, we don't give in to it. But the Senate just committed what Trump said wouldn't happen, and that's a cover, because uh, that, that just shows me Trump is just in on it. That's how they do it. They say, oh, we're not doing this to you, and they're doing it. They're doing it just as they say it, just so you, you think that they're not doing it, and you agree with it. So this land package is conservation areas. That's a war crime. Recreation. Is recreation more than important than raw materials, which creates base jobs in raw materials production, which produces a tertiary, up to, beyond, at least quickly, tertiary economies around that to support it? That means they're destroying jobs. They want to put national monuments. That's not. That's covering up all these minerals that you need. It's going to cover up the trees that you need. It doesn't matter that Canada can outproduce us. We have our own to do. And why? It's the same fire resiliency problem. They want to make fire a weapon against you. You start cutting trees and harvesting, you do the right watershed management, you won't have the types of fires that you normally have. I'm pausing here. I mean, is anybody thinking about this stuff? You think and you set pretty. You think about, oh, that makes sense, and that's all you do? There is things coming down in this country that are coming now so quickly. I'm just astonished. And then it just, it just hit hard that the Senate would cut our throats in a collaborative process. This is what the killer for me was. Collaborative process. That is treason, folks. Murkowski told the AP it was a very, very collaborative process. Right there, right in the article. Other notable provisions include 367 miles of new wild and scenic rivers. Brand new. And it's all in the imposition of what the, what the, the Democrats did. All agreed to. It was almost as if what they said, we, don't, we just want to get this done. And it's, it's a big pain to us. But what's the public lands anyway? It's managed. Who cares? And they're completely violating. See, every one of you has the right to go out and get minerals. And you have some other rights in the forest as well. And they're taking, in those areas, they've taken all that from you. And then what they do is they take them and then they add more regulatory control. So when you go do try to do it, you're going to be under constraints that don't allow you to get the stuff that was yours. And you'll notice, if you look carefully, you'll find in the states, you have right to go get timber for you. You've got right to go get some gravel. It's all statutorily limited, but you still have the right to get gravel and you have the right to get some timber, and you have the right to make your basics. People have are clueless to all this stuff. And I think 
you talk about self-reliant. We're not self-reliant to that point. We don't even know, so we don't even know to protect it, and we don't even realize that it's actually being stolen from us, whether or not you want to do it. It doesn't mean that it doesn't need to be protected. So there's a we got hit pretty hard with this one. I don't really quite know what to do. Because it started in the Senate, uh, and it's a land policy, it's going to go to the House. The last option we have is to go and tell the President again. Again, we have three, ma three demands on our injunction. Uh, to, to, it's a constitutional crisis in this country. You may not understand that. You may think I'm blowing smoke. But it doesn't really matter. The truth and the reality is when what happened in our lawsuit had happened and we get to the point when there's no remedy for it, it becomes a, a big constitutional matter. It also allows it to, it's a national security interest on top of it's a real one, not the one they invent, where it now brings the United States into no excuse for how it treats others. And this is likely we're not why we're not getting a response because they can't agree admit to all this. That we we told already we told Trump this was coming and we could help to avoid it, and he did nothing to stop this. And now they've stolen more land and they specifically state they don't they don't want to let mining happen. Now why would a, a the states and again this came from the Senate why would it be in the best interest of the states to no longer allow mining to happen? Mining is a wealth driving and creating function that a modern society cannot live without. Why would the, the states want to cut their throat to do that? Unless your states have been taken over by those that want to take you down. Senate passes massive public lands conservation bill. The word, the title tells me everything. It's a war crime what the Republican Party, the control, I shouldn't say that, what the controlled uh, Senate by the Republican Party had the ability to stop and didn't. Our last gasp, our hail mary, is to contact Trump uh, if we can, and we're to tell him, "Listen, you're allowing this bill allows the socialism you said wouldn't happen. It's going to be here. It, that bill, this this bill right here, is going to bring it in. It guarantees it's not going to stop as well." And this is a, we remember we were talking about like Utah, uh, Senator Mike Lee was pushing for this thing and it got taken away from him. See how they do that? And so now Utah is now under the gun again. They're going to have all those lands taken back. But they were, uh, but, uh, I think Trump came in and uh, the administration said we're not going to go, we're going to limit, minimize the monument size. No, this bill comes back and they agree to expand all this stuff back out. And they steal the obligation of the United States to the mineral estate they granted to the people of the United States. And I'm, I'm hearing crickets except for myself, my colleagues, and what we can do, which is really not that much. It's like, it's like it's literally a candle in the wind. It's still there as an evidence, but it's a candle in the wind relative to w where the momentum is, is going, where, where the power comes from. And I hear no help. I hear no people. Everybody wants to talk about their rights. They want to talk about the, the right they have, inherent power, antecedent right, inherent rights. The constant, I don't care where you find them. You have none. And you're going to find out how little as we move in through these decades now, where now we see the, the, the mask has came, come off the Republican Party. They agree to commit war crimes. Senate passes public lands legislation to protect Oregon wild and scenic rivers. They don't want to protect. This is all about the environment. This is sustainable development. It's not about production. It's not production, not management, rightful management of the watershed. It's not about producing wealth. It's not about producing a, a tertiary up to well uh, multiple levels of economy that's in support. And they don't want. They are interfering with non-commerce activity as well. Figure that one out. How are they doing that, folks? And I hear crickets on all this stuff. I don't even think 99.9. .9 fine of you even think about this stuff. That's our problem. You may not think it's our problem, but that's our problem. We have to be thinking of it. If we were the republic that we were given to keep, if you haven't been thinking about it, it didn't get kept. Pretty simple. And I'm suggesting to you strongly to reconsider maybe making excuses and not acting when these things are coming down. 1,900 miles of wild and scenic river taken right out of production particularly against mining. How does a nation do that to itself? How does a state benefit for doing that? For saving salmon on a lie that salmon's harmed by mining that doesn't happen? 
the studies of which show the salmon are pretty tough. They don't, if they need to be tough, it's all, again, it's the fraud that they promote, an alternative dispute that they resolve in collaboration. The Congress, Senate is now, and is now, and the Democrats and the Republicans now fulfill again what we sued in 2013, that they do that and commit treason in doing so. This story is that point. On your public land, you think, oh, it's a public land. Folks, that's where your materials, that's where your wealth comes from. And that's where rights and love. Out there for each one of you is a mineral deposit, should you, should you find it, that you can claim as private property to you. They're taking the areas away that are the most prolific. All your rivers is where the gold goes, folks. It's heavy. It goes to the raw water. They're taking all that away from you. You may not have a desire to go do that. The point is, what about your neighbor's son? What about your neighbor? What about maybe your son? What about your, your wife? Maybe it's your daughter that wants to go do this. I make all this stuff up. I got none of this happening. My time's coming, folks. I, I'll be... I could be gone any moment. Might be lucky to go 20 more, but I don't think so. Who knows? So it's all for you all and your kids and what's going on. And the Senate just said that your state doesn't need these things in favor of a war crime against you to not produce. You're only going to get recreation. You're not going to get wealth. You're not going to be able to go out and make a livelihood. You're going to be conformed into the stack them and pack them locales that they want you. And if you want to go out there, they're going to be regulated into being more of a pain than it's worth to go do. And then you're going to be dealing with private entities that are in management of all this as a public-private partnership who are overseeing the place. Who will ding you for any rock you kick over if, uh, on the trail, let alone off the trail. And then all those trails that aren't facilities... We're supposed to be granted to you. Where are you protecting that? And if you can't protect those, how do you have any right to complain about your right to drive? Because your right to drive is attached to those outlying road, roads and trails. I don't know if you know that. That's how you even have the ones that you have. Mo roads, yeah, a miner probably built those. Or a forestry, a, a timber harvest company. Yeah, raw materials producers make all that stuff. And then your lo local or jurisdictions that you all agree to by where you pay your taxes, they will adopt whether or not they want to maintain the roads or they leave it to the material producer as they need it. And I'm going to tell you, we, put a, we, we have to do our yearly maintenance on the roads all the time, and we don't get a dime out of it or for it or any of it. And we have to tolerate anyone going across it. That comes from raw materials producers. You're not going to be getting as these things, these places get clo closed off, as you don't understand how the raw materials are affected, the, the failure of the, uh, the access and the supply by somebody that lives next to you possibly to go get them for you, you're, you are divorced from that supply chain. You don't realize how important it is. And then you don't realize that if they're not getting it from us and they're holding it away, they're stealing it from somewhere else. Everything you do, your computer, everything you look at that's not a fiber or a food is likely a mineral. Everything wouldn't exist. And if it does exist, and I'm not making the gold for to go into your computers, or I'm not pulling the platinum out or whatever valuable mineral I look for to find and try to consolidate and, and concentrate and then sell in the market to be smelted, anything I don't find is being stolen from another country. Or someone put in slavery or danger because of it. So that's what's neat about the American uh, system. We, it's, it's, it's actually, it's kind of a, it's neat in a way, but it's not. The raw material produce, producer pays for all that for all y'all. Just to go get the raw materials. It's on their back, not anybody else's. And you get it for nothing, essentially, except for you trade this fiat when you get around to it, because we've abandoned even what the miner does as substance, and the property that shows you that they have. See, the property of the miner is the gold, and the gold is the property to you in, in grant for other things. It's not the fiat system. That's what they're killing as well. I'm taking on too much time on this. There's so much to talk about. I'm not taking too much time. I just have so much to bring out. And it's not going to be getting and all these things. And I don't know who's interested and who's not. And so I, some little thing goes in my brain. Well, let's maybe move on. You've talked enough. No one's listening. 
They're not going to do anything anyway. They haven't done anything for 10 years. They haven't done anything for 20 years. You've been writing about it. So what's the, let's just move on. Maybe you'll find something that, that tickles someone to go do something. Let's move on the idea. Folks, this is an attack on your country. I'll just maybe close this. Conservation is a war crime. The non-use of your, of your resources is a war crime. The Senate, in, it, at the behalf, for, in, in the interest of the states you live in, just cut your throat. And Trump's okay with that, apparently. It came from the, again, it's the GOP controlled, the Republican Party controlled Senate. And so this starts to expose this lie that we're watching and living and we allow and we continue. And uh, to me, it becomes the crickets. It becomes this, I said war crime, folks. You're in a war. There's a war against us as the people. And I think it's one that the Second Amendment's not resolving and can resolve. And I think, to the most part, unless we solve the Lincoln problem, it can't. And they're eroding these ex they're eroding all these areas. Uh, out pops at the same time as we hear the news about the uh, national emergency that's that's used uh, to build the wall, which is an interesting tactic on Trump. And I said if he's going to do that in the beginning, and he knew that he didn't need to go through the first stoppage. I already talked about that part. But up pops ABC News, giving you a list of all the emergencies that you live under as given you notice in the Federal Register. And if you don't understand the importance of this and how it connects you to the the corporate consequences, well, you're missing something. And not that it's I focus on the corporate consequence, but this, because they're working outside of that, that's how it becomes uh, usable. There are like 58 national emergencies that you live under if you think the Trump one was something new or if you think it's not a tool. That when I saw, that I noticed I told you that if he already knows he can take Title 50 war powers and build his wall and doesn't need any appropriations, the government shutdown was a facade to do something else. And now we see that this bill's coming down that he's apparently going to sign. We'll see. It's coming through the, through the, uh, the channels. That the Congress allowed to him uh, over a billion dollars to build his wall. He didn't get the seven he needed. But what was that? What that was that was his tactic to get the Congress to buy in at all. It could have been a buck. Because he already knew he could get the money. No, he got one point something billion to build that wall from Congress. It'll be agreed to by the Senate. And he's going to sign it. And now he's going to go with only one point something. He can't get enough. So he's going to go to get his national emergency anyway. But now the Congress can't uh, fight him, can they? He's got concurrence by both parties. That, that's a scammer. He's doing it under national emergencies. Those emergencies have been with us. These have been tools. We haven't shut them down. They use this national security, national emergency. I don't even know where the national emergency authority is, except for a bar member said it was that way. And then there was never this provision, I keep telling you to attack somebody. We do it, but I mean, there's only so many, again... It's going to take a lot of candles in the wind before we start heating up the air here, folks. We address the fact of the fraud of the national security impair, uh, um, excuse. Uh, with mining, you also have the power that mining is for national security. Where do you see that, folks? You just go read it. Any of, uh, some of you may not, but it's 30 U.S.C. 1802 to 06 or so, right in there. 30 U.S.C., 1802 or 6 to 6. You see, mining, the act of mining is national security. The Senate just withdrew from mining for the purpose of stopping mining. All the lands and rivers where they'd find the gold is a second backdoor way to prove that they're making a war crime against your nation and violating national security. And I guess I say it like that. I want you to get your mind wrapped around how stupid this becomes pretty quick when you look at the objective basis called the law that nobody seems to be following and no accountability to it, and the people are responsible to that. You have a republic if you keep it. And they're using that license. It's a license to those that are going to violate it, and they're going to continue. So ABC News is a great favor. They list... Um, uh, they list 58 national emergencies. The 31 have to be annually up, up, to, up. To, which means 31 of them, your your government's upping all the time to keep them in emergencies. So they keep doing this nonsense to you. 
we, we hear they use the national emergency uh, to help a foreigner, a foreign, uh, non-state actually, in Israel, in, in uh, Israel, the Israelis, the Zionists. We see that influence c continually on on this stuff. But what here, 1995, you think this happened last week? The national emergency with respect to prohibiting transactions with terrorists who threaten to dispute, uh, to disrupt the Middle East peace process placed economic sanctions in response to Jerusalem bombing. This, this cancer, this other cancer is, is everywhere you look. And it's part of the impetus to continue the war crimes against you. Now, Trump, I told you, that was a, that was a maneuver. If he, as soon as he, he told us, he knew that the national emergency powers were now war powers were made enough to make the the, the uh, wall. I knew what was coming down with the scam. I now after looking at how it played out and play or is playing out, he just needed to get Congress's consent, and that was them putting the money in their part. It could have been a buck. So that's pretty that's pretty sharp, but that's not not what I would think to be straight up. Is it? It's not a straight shooter that way, is it? And then to find the party he's supposed to promote while as president, cutting your throats in the states by putting in a public land bill that violates laws, is a war crime, and violates the national security, the very power he's invoking to build the wall. And y'all are crickets? We deserve what we get, I guess I can say, and I'm sad to have to say that. And some of you say, who cares, it's not going to matter, I'm going to live my life out. Oh, okay, fine, I don't know what to say about that. You didn't live your life, oh, I saw the word go through the chat. It was integrity at that point. You're just excusing your way outside of maybe excusing or justifying a, a system, oh, I just I barely got through. I had what I needed. All the time, that's a mentality of theft, in my mind. You're just stealing what you can get away with and not have to really be responsible for it. You're taking benefit. See, there's no context to that. You're taking benefit of how you even exist and dismissing that it meant anything to you. And but for that, you wouldn't be there. You'd be completely doing something else. And that's why I, I look at this thing kind of like, don't, you've got to be careful on what we start throwing out, like the baby with the bathwater. We've got to be careful on what we claim we're not doing and what we end up doing impl impliedly that we don't talk about. The lack of context in the memification of our social of our social media is a prime example of this. So you've been living under under tons of uh, exposure of um, national emergencies. The Senate just passed a law that was contrary to national security. No one says anything about this stuff. I just gave you the statute that proves it. And what am I going to hear from that? Am I going to hear, and I'm not going to put this on everybody, what if I just spoke to the ones that had are the ones that have chosen because... Mining is a very special thing. You're you're a miner or you're not kind of thing. And this is historic. You can you can like to be a miner and you can become a miner. What I'm saying is that to be a miner is a it's kind of a different mentality and it's historic. Miners were sought out. Good I mean real miners were sought out to seek minerals and prospect and then find the best way that what we now know as mining engineers. There was inherency in someone's skill set as a, pe a people to do that. Not everybody in society does that. And so they were highly sought out for. So it's a special uh, interest and skill. You can all do it, but in nature, there's this, it's like anybody has a proclivity to do certain things certain ways. It doesn't exalt anybody, well, unless, unless the power w wants to exalt it. It just makes you in a place that you're more uh, susceptible to going in that path. So I don't want to put any exalting uh, nature on We're all doing what we do. But everyone can do this, and everyone ought to consider it. And those that uh, don't do it, there's going to be someone that may take your place, but he's going to provide for you. And not to address that and understand that is uh, an interesting um, disengagement, and I don't like, uh, and it's not a good disengagement. Uh, but uh, now we have someone coming to steal from those that would make for everybody, which I can show you at 30 U.S.C. 1802 or to six or so, right in there, is a national security concern. That has not been addressed at all and probably won't be unless some of y'all step up. And the miners need to. I don't think they will. And if they do and they heard this and they're not really following me, but they listen just because they, they want to keep tabs, they're going to do it wrong. So you got to, it's not just knowing this and you got to go out there and oh, raise the flag and pull the, the, raise the flag, your flag. Here's a pitchfork and a torch. No, there's a certain way to approach this anymore. This war terrain is serious stuff. They've now attacked 
with this public lands bill, you don't know they've attacked your country. They've brought in at least socialism with it. They're doing this to diminish us in favor of other foreign interests. As we can see, right, one of the, one of the emergencies that they're going under is, is relative to Jerusalem. And there's more. I'm not going to go through it. And then it, this story popped up. Undercover spy exposed in NYC was one of many. I'm going to jump a little bit here, but this war, remember they got cyber war going on. Government puts a lot, the United States government claims to put a lot of uh, uh, work, money into this situation. We see who's the recipient of a lot of this uh, reverse uh, buying and technology and private partnershipping, but is the Israelis. They're highly sensitive to it, anybody who tries to interfere with their organized criminal syndicate. We hit, see this, and we see it tied into this continuing decisions that destroy this country and the people of this country by whichever party. When mysterious operatives lured two cybersecurity researchers to meetings at luxury hotels over the past two months, it was apparent bid to discredit their research about an Israeli company that makes smartphone hacking technology used by some governments to spy on their citizens. The Associated Press has now learned of similar undercover efforts targeting at least four other individuals who have raised questions about the use of Israeli firms' Spy, spyware. If you don't think this is an ongoing battlefield, what we live in anymore, and it's international, this is another story pointing to the same culprits and the same problems and the same mentality in your government that will give over to bribes, if you will, what, for whatever reason, under whatever pretext. There doesn't have to be money here. The bribe comes, uh, the the consideration is doesn't have to be money in my, my mind that you still commit treason. You still allow it without when you don't fight it. You still allow felonies against people when you don't arrest them. The uh, four the four others targeted by operatives include three lawyers involved in a related lawsuit in Israel and Cyprus, alleging that the company S N S O Group sold its spyware to governments with questionable human rights records. You know, behind which we're not high on human rights. Go look at, go read the declaration. You'll see about three quarters of the way in. All your rights, so called to the animal, the human, not the man, not the woman, the human. The sound of a man, maybe, but not the man or the woman. Human rights are all subject to state and centralized control. Go read the Declaration of Human Rights. You'll find it. These lawyers also agree with all this. But this is what they bring. This is what we're going to go. Uh, the questionable human rights records. Well, they treat you as an animal here. The Israeli companies believe you're an animal to be tracked and traced and, and all this governance global connection. Some people got a little bit, uh, got hit a little too hard uh, in their senses here. Uh, the point is not that how this even dyna the dynamic works. is that there is these people out there infiltrating everywhere to, to silence people. To make sure their voice is the only one that comes out. And it takes people to stand up and fight and object, I guess is the point here as well, before we start to find out about it. Again, that bill, that public lands bill, for me, I had no sense it was coming. Didn't even hear they were working on it. Completely blindsided us. And here there was very collaborative. Well, what did that mean? That shouldn't surprise me. Collaborative is private to an outcome. And the only outcome that comes from conservation is a war crime. So you tell me again, what would the collaboration, the collaborators, during war, those people got shot for being spies. And yet it, now it made, it made legislation. Now it's going to be passed. But I can't see it being stopped by the House, which is democratically controlled. And unless we can get lines into to Trump, hold him, his feet to the fire on his statement that it wouldn't be a socialist, that this country wouldn't be socialist, and pointing out that what's happening in that bill is, until we get that pressure and that embarrassment, I don't think this thing gets stopped, and your country goes down one more notch, big time goes down. And in here to gather all this information and cause the influence, and, and, and inside the battlefield, the spies that are inside, even cyber, the cyber world, where they're actually getting all this information, all this is going to go through all that. We have the Israelis now protecting their interests to continue to do this. Remember, they're getting paid to do all this stuff. So this war, is all the evidence that sits there, the spies are everywhere. There's really no accountability. Some people are saying, wait, that's got too much too fast for me. That's all the only reason why we're seeing this complaint at all. 
But it's the same parties involved with your destruction, it seems. And their influence comes out like a ripple, and it influences, and remember I said that the, this law legislation for the anti-BDS really wasn't First Amendment violation because all it was was officially saying we won't regulate that speech. In other words, impliedly, the states can. Now, that's where you folks are going to see the First Amendment violations, whether or not you understand how to fight them or that you do or don't. But you see how this game is played. This is really kind of fascinating. But they now telegraph to the enforcement of the states, if you want to talk about states' rights, that they can come and beat you up. Well, we already know that. That's really not even uh, news. But I'm just saying it's, it's just repeated over and over and over. And what they hand it to in this rule, uh, in this, um, what I can't, I can't see, it's nothing other than martial rule, if nothing else, martial law, as defined in the first article of uh, the Libra Code, Again, you go to my blogcaster, everyone has a link. You go read this. I went through and I did multiple broadcasts reading it to you because it has an outline that's happened since Lincoln's time of how they're doing it to us. No different than these are instruction manuals you can do. But they hand this power. You talk about states' rights now. They hand this power. They say, we're going to have hands off. Or in the other area, for the where I'm going to go now, they actually say, we're going to give you money to make stuff up. But we're going to go through what another emergency called the war on drugs. We declared war on drugs. An inanimate thing. And forget about the fact the United States government causes it. That's not the point. The point is you believe and we have the authority to say underneath this banner we get to do all kinds of stuff. And our cops, our U.S. police, which there is none, but that's how they use, will pay you locally as your local police in order to be our, our soldiers. And uh, because there's no accountability, and because you can be too smart and psychologically stable to be a cop, you can see how this stuff starts to roll downhill in a bad way. we got spies inside going after people that are exposing a, a crime in an Israeli company doing uh, spying on you. Uh, we have uh, senators that are de want to destroy your, your states by saying it's in benefit of those states. We've got this completely insane view going on, and no one's saying, well, again, no one. I'm saying it. I may be the only one, and if please, I really, if you know of anybody else that's doing this, that identifies it and has more than just a talk and has a, has the remedies that we can work through, I need to know about it because I'm starting to lose my desire to keep talking to people that won't listen. I don't know if I can stop because there's something else in me that keeps driving me to do this. It's outside of me. I've given over to that. What I want is not what I want is not important. This is that serious. People around me that support what I do believe that too. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here either. And so, I don't know of anybody else that does this. If you know anybody, we need to start maybe somehow getting together. I need to at least know there's somebody out there that's focusing people on the right thing. Not doing the Alex Jones, oh, I can complain and talk and show you these things are there and not tell you what to go do about it. Now, Okay. What do you do about the Senate? Well, you got senators. They're supposed to be in your town, looking uh, in your state, looking for you. You, you can jump. You locals can jump on that. You can contact and write letters to Trump and say, "Hey, you said there was not going to be any socialism, uh, and then the extent by extension Marxism. Now you've just uh, let your party in the Senate agree to a, 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 a war crimes against us. You need to not sign that bill. You can make that letter. Why not just make copy what I just said, even as arbitrary as that was." You can go down to your local groups, uh, your local decision makers, and start to impose yourself like you're supposed to. And I've said on this next story about when you talk about the war you're in, and that the local cops are soldiers for this federal war that you're still under, as we, I think Andrew Johnson uh, proclaimed in his failure to, to proclaim the end of the Civil War, but agree Texas was next to become into tow, and you did. The cops are now the soldiers, federally, to control you locally. And we get these stories out through the war uh, on, on drugs, which should be ended. All this stuff should be stopped to clean the slate. And, but I remembered it, and I reminded people at the Jefferson Mining District meeting, I said, remember, when they removed all the emergencies, they kept one. Little test, folks. Which one did they keep? Well, you old trivia guy, you trivia people in there in the chat. Which one did they keep? 
When they said they were removing all emergencies, they lied. Which one did they keep? I've said it before. This shouldn't even be hard. Are you, do you really, again, do you hear what? Do you listen to me? It's, all, it's important because it ties together. All right, enough time. I hope you had an answer. Trading with the Red Enemy Act was the only one they did. They, they, didn't, they didn't free up. That still rode through the emergencies to allow the rest of the emergencies to come. It was like the uh, concentrated evil cinder that they left underneath the, the piano, I think it was, in the movie. It grew back up. 9-11 didn't help. Trading with the Enemy Act. It's also in commerce. It's also international law. It's also in military. It's also in your money. 12 U.S.C. 95A or B. Remember those, folks? I've talked talk about this for a long time, but I talk about it. That's your money, folks. So your fiat. That's what this whole thing goes on. That's your war powers. All sitting in there. 95. 12, your financial construct is a, is a footnote in the war powers. And so all this money and all this influence, it's not money, but all this perceived influence in funds is what they end up being, goes to lo your, local, your local cops, which is under the war, of drug, uh, war, uh, war on, on drugs, and it's what you will be affected by, even if you're innocent. Now here we have that story about how this rolls out, how this, how this, um, the cockistocracy, the, the cockistocracy rolls from the top and invades everybody's life. And you sit there and you don't respond to it. And I said, here's what I said about answering this. When you're talking about your local cops, you need to go in and even though this is, you don't, you want to talk about your rights, you got to talk about their policies first. And you got to make a policy and pass policies that forbid this kind of thing. In other words, as I've been showing in the smoke ordinance, that we did only get as a proclamation, so it failed. Someone derailed that, and we're going to go go to a different county and try it a different way. We need the ordinance. We need to put teeth in the local power. Not a proclamation saying, oh, we do pro proclaim this, like some fool, I I I some jester in a funny suit standing on a street corner. I proclaim this. Who cares? No, you need an ordinance. You need to be able to teeth uh, the law to stop this, but you can't do it directly. So your policies is where you start for this local war, local to you. In this story, you lie, you die. Cops admit to lying about raid that left innocent couple murdered. Another example of the war on drugs, another national emergency being used to kill innocent people. And the cops are not intelligent enough and not psychologically stable enough to not lie against you when they do it. They will fabricate the high heaven and implicate people that weren't even, in this case, where this story is coming out in. This is in Texas, Houston, Texas. When you heard the four cops got shot, we also heard, the oh, this is a people drug deal and all this stuff. It was all fabricated by a cop who then uh, lied even on the, on the informants to make it possible to go in and kill innocent people. You lie, you die happened to be what the uh, chief of that police department said about the guy, that, the cop they found out made the lie. All he suffered was loss of a job. We'll see whether it goes further. This is a premeditated murder. That he could even think to do this is the problem. Not that he even carried it out. As soon as they get in their mind, they might conspire to do that in themselves. We have a problem in our system. It's not that they just died. It's that this guy thought he could do it, and he did. It wasn't stopped up front. The same war crime against you at the Senate was not stopped up front in the so-called representatives, saying, oh, this is great for the state. I want you to look at that sentence. Is it great for the state to get rid of your actual wealth and bring people, keep people in work and uh, keep them from going into all the, the drugs that they're going to seek and alcohol that they, when they don't have, a, have the, the, the work that they need to, to, to survive? When you start having to go and rip off other countries, like Israel was ripping off the Palestinian gravel to make your stuff, do you think you're any different? When you sit silent and consume, you lie, you die. Was a statement from the the cop. Oh, we got caught. Now you're gonna. Now you are fine. You soldier. You went too far. I didn't see anything about a wholesale review on how they're gonna not let this happen anymore. Two. In, I told you this before. Two innocent people are not going to be able to be vindicated. They're dead. And I, I questioned the whole point in the beginning. How are these people thinking, these cops, they're too smart to be a cop, maybe this is the answer, and too psychological stable. When you have the right to defend your home in that state, 
What was a no-knock pr pr principle even continued was the problem for me. You can almost guarantee people are going to go to guns and defend themselves with a, a break-in like that. That's a setup that's premeditated beyond, I mean, that's truly psychopathic. And to think you can get away with it. We're so far down the trail of wrong when that wasn't stopped to think that they could get away with it. But there wasn't checks and balances ahead is my notice to tell you you need to go in these areas and find these policies and look at this and say, this need, will stop. And it stops, and you sit back and you think about this before you go to make the suggestion. This will stop by you making this an extension of your policy, your police, your policy considerations in, in moving what you think is serving the public. The public means government. This is the war that comes down. I, I can't help but look around, and I, all I see is this war against people, and they sit as crickets. They sit in 1964 at uh, Simon and Garfunkel did the song. You read the words of that song, and I just couldn't believe how much we're not in the same thing. The, the, the neon gods that they created is you, folks, on the Internet. You're focused in on that while the rats are playing everywhere else. And people are dying here. And that could be you. So as this war starts to turn down on you, as I've been telling you it's there and how, to sh how it works and where to be to start at least slow it up until more can come and do the, the more heavy lifting that may need to be done. Worldwide effort to restrict everyone's right to travel is, is, is close to a reality. Worldwide effort. Where is this worldwide effort that you see in the news, folks? Now, you're going to go through this story, and you're going to see very astonishing things. They've been working as a war power across the globe. If you don't think that this sustainable development in a different term, and by a different mechanism, because it's not necessarily military up front, that you don't think that this is on its coming through, and I've been telling you about it how, why are you listening to me anymore? Why are you in the chat rooms? Why are you talking? Why are you on social media? Just maybe you can do do us a, a favor. Buy a, an Acme behind a woodshed bucket of sand and stick your head in it. And you know the problem with that is I still haven't got that product line up. I don't have that bucket of sand. So why don't you go and make yourself one and just put BTW on the side. Stick your head in that bucket. Because that's as good as you are for every bit of this. The U.N. is coming to constrain your travel. And they're locking here on the international side. It's not going to stop because of the real idea. I've already connected that to your states. I've connected this whole thing into the commerce structure and what's going to happen around that and by the rules because this the United States is a mandatory state. No one's saying, yeah, but to the extent that it interferes with the Constitution, it's not. And that's why the, the sustainable development couldn't be passed by the Senate because they realized that. You, there's a whole setup that the United States, essentially I'll put it this way, the five eyes surveillance, surveillance countries are already green-lighted this process, international process. If you don't think the United States is already on the forefront of how the, you're going to cause you to not be able to travel unless it's under scrutiny and permission, that this, this, this white paper that's written explains just that. You will not be able to tra travel. They will know all about you before you even get there. You will not be able to travel unless the government or some bureau rat gives permission to the carrier to carry you. And then they do an interesting thing. Then they, they, that's the first filter. Then when you get to the other side, if they have a decided, uh, there's a problem, the others, the country that you enter into can stop you. If they choose, because of this question of a database you have no control over, under the suspicions that are not defined, as we talked about all this time, a bureau rat does this. This is executive expedience par excellence, folks. And you get over there, wherever you're going, if you dare go there, and they decide they want to mess with you. They can hold you up and keep you. For whatever time they want. Remember, we're getting to the point of indefinite detention. They just make this stuff up as well. And then the this plan says that the, and this is how they, I think they did this so the government would be on the hook for it, but they don't say that. The carrier is not required and liable to bring you back if you're stopped at the destination. No, they'll let you go 
if they do, but you can still be stopped when you get there, is your traveling future. And if you think it just has to do with airplanes, you're just trying to, again, get folks, get that bucket of sand. You need it now. You don't want to see the world, uh, what's coming. And then consider your posture and position as you got your head in that acme, behind a woodshed acme bucket of sand, and who's coming to do whatever they want because they have the power. Why? Because you stuck your head in that bucket of sand. Why? Because uh, I guess you like to make excuses instead of looking at a contextual reality and not live in your memeified world in social media or elsewhere. Worldwide effort to control your travel. Boy, this is so far beyond what I've been talking about and how we have the right to go after. And then you realize this is a private UN organization that's going to have what they get—the OSCE monitoring group that implements this. That's the same group that goes to Donbass and allows the Ukrainians to shell and bomb the Donbass people without willy-nilly, without accountability, and they just say, "We're just here to monitor, and you just take your licks." It's supposed to be a security organization. International security. Private and not within the government. Public-private partnership is in your future, in your travels. And certainly they're not going to stop you in your car right now, but it's coming, folks. It's coming underneath all this UN sustainable development imposition. And the, and the soldiers of this war are your cops. And so unless you get involved pretty quickly and you start to make the laws locally, the, the, the intelligent way to stop the external threat, I don't know what, the future's not looking good. And I don't see good for the future, except that I believe that we can turn it around. And I don't know why I do, why I think that. I guess I have to. It's just, I told you I'm driven by something else. I've kind of thrown myself aside and I said there's a need bigger than me. Otherwise, folks, I'd go through years now arguing with myself, do I do the next broadcast? And then one of you will pop up, darn you, you'll pop up, you'll send me an email, and you say, hey, I found this, I'd like to do that. Man, that's all, I almost live for that. But so bleedingly thin is that density of those people that are doing that, it's, it's really a disappointment. It's a disgust at some other level, actually. I just look, I just don't know what to think. I hear all these complaints, and no one really wants to step up and do anything, and all the excuses. And this is down here, folks. This is coming down on you. It's an international imposition on your travel. And no one steps up to attack that it can't be mandatory. Why? Let's go back to that Constitution and say, you government didn't have the right to agree with all that when it went to this point. What's the other one? Your national securities is all fraud. It's all pretense. That's never been challenged to my mind. And then you don't do it in a way that gives it to the Bar Association to decide. You do more like what I said in equity. You take it away from the courts. You put it in the law. Now, that's a totally different view than I've been telling you before, where the little property book I, I said said that the law, where there is no property, there's no need for law. And then the other discussion, that's another maxim or so, that says that there's the equity exists in the absence of law. And at the time, for what I was we were discussing, that was a really big negative, because then it, stuff can be made up. That's if you let equity handle you. But when you grab the sword of equity, the justice and the scales, and your justice and scales are determined by, by the facts that you say that you have right of, that the other side cannot address. You take the, the decision, the discretion from the judge, and you take it from the defendant because they have they default, they don't have an answer. And so for those of you that say you're going to the law and using their courts, you don't understand. You're not listening to me. Oh, you hear, you hear me, but you're not listening. And it takes a bit of thought. I'm realizing now, as I see people doing, they're really skillful at certain things. Certainly things, it's easier to see in things I just can't even imagine myself doing. When I see them really skillful, I start to get more, I can reflect now what, I, what I'm what i saying here a little bit better. There's just certain things that you will not understand until you've got into, you commit. And you work. And I don't know if it goes to the extent, but I think this is part of it. You put yourself away and you put the the matter that needs to be resolved first. Or mostly so. And until you get into that, that groove, you're not singing a song. You're not, you're not singing the tune. You're not doing, you're not going the direction you're supposed to go. You're just going to be flittering around doing whatever you want and, and sounding really like you're important. 
So I, I, uh, this is just um, worldwide effect restrict everyone's right of travel. There's a whole lot in this article. Uh, there's little schematics. Go look at them. You've got to see how they're, gonna, they're working this out. It's nothing I haven't told you already. It's, and, the, and this is the thing I do like about people on the Internet that are putting stuff together. I certainly don't have the time, but we get they get to bring for us the more concise statement. I ask you to reanalyze that for yourself and commit to understand clear. They may make, may make mistakes. They may lead the path. They may not understand uh, to make a proper statement. You have to research for that. I, For what I understand, I do that. So I, I have to be careful not to just buy into all this. But when you see who these players are and that it's been doing, and it's already in place, the Five Eyes Surveillance States, are already greenlighting this thing. That's you, Canada, UK, uh, Kanukistan, that's uh, New Zealand, that's uh, Australia. You're already greenlighted for this control at the UN level. They're claiming it's mandatory. And so, you can sit here and listen to me and do not that thing. Oh, say, so what? It's not going to happen to me. Folks, this is what they start doing through your regulatory of the state. I just told you the Senate agreed it's in favor of the state to do war crimes against you. Well, how's that? Okay, do I, if you just tuned in, conservation, folks. You think you hear about, oh, we got to conserve. No, when you look at how it's implemented, the practice of non-use of your public raw materials and your property and your rights relative to that and the appurtenances relative to those and the law that was supposed to sit there is attacked and destroyed in these principles that they are now putting on you, that was done by supposed to be a representative of the body politic that you are a part of in any of these states. We still have the congressional side, but that's taken over by the same mob now. But anyway, so, yeah, conservation is a war crime. Research it, folks. The non-use of things, the lack, the, the waste of water for, non, for not using dams that you can when you know it's there, that's also a violation of the certification treaty, but that's a war crime. How is it in the interest of the states and the senators representing those states to, uh, that to commit war crimes against you has to be in international law, and you have to start regarding these organizations that I'm talking about, that the reports come off the Internet to show you the people that are diligently researching the basic information that says that the United States is already involved in deterring, making databases uh, since, what, 2017, I think, officially, of every piece of data about you to make these decisions, I've been telling you, do not have a, a basis more than the mere suspicion and without actual cause. Just cause, not with lawful cause. It's here, folks. I don't know what to want to say. I, I just don't, since I don't see the reflection much of it, I see people doing lots of other things. I just, I just, my, my shoulders want to slump. I, in part, I want to give up. And yet, and yet, Minnesota judges spend only minutes approving warrants sweeping up thousands of cell phone users. In what world do you live in where the so-called judge just rubber stamps a warrant, uh, what they call an invented warrant, no less, a reverse warrant, to enco encapsulate large areas around the point of an act of crime? In this case, there's a burglar at a house. You happen to be in a three or four block radius of that house and a court issues a reverse warrant to go to Google or anywhere else they have data, and you know 5G is going to have tons of that going around, even your uh, Internet of Things uh, Nest and all your and your Alexa, and you get to pull all this information, and you get to construct whether or not someone was pertinent to that robbery. It's here, folks. It's happening in Minnesota. What do you have to do? You're going to have to get out, and you're going to have to stop these reverse warrants. You're going to have to invalidate them somehow. You're going to have to show that's too broad. It doesn't conform with the specificity that a warrant is required. And you're going to have to figure out how to do it. And if you don't, one day, you're sitting in your room. You don't want to answer. They know you're in the house. And because they have this so-called reverse warrant, they bust your door down and shoot you. You didn't even know about the house. For as integrated as our neighborhoods are, you didn't even know that house existed, let alone got ripped off, let alone the people in it. But no different than the drug war. The excess has come by people that are too smart to be a cop and are too psychologically, you can be, and they're not psychologically stable to be uh, not a cop. And they come in underneath these pretense that we find out in Houston are made up. Just like I told you folks. 
I said, you're not innocent here, folks. You're going to be subject. You're subject. We were told about that in 9-11, uh, the Patriot Act. We were told about that the NDAA. We were told about that for sure in the murder memo. We're told about that everywhere. If you just look, you're not innocent. That's why everyone said, well, I thought I was presumed to be innocent. Well, I don't know. Look at that. Is that a constitutional right? Because it ain't a right underneath an occupation. And that's how you're being treated. Sweeping warrants. We call war we invent the warrant now. Forget the specificity. This is you got my my only view on that is I don't care what you call it and what you think you do and understand and all. What place are you living in when someone can rip off the house two miles away? And next thing you got a cop on your door because some data said that you might have been driving by at the time. might have been driving by. We see all this data, they're finding out, all this data doesn't tell anything. And that's the other, I keep telling you all this stuff. I don't know what, I don't know why people just don't start shaking in their, sh shaking in their shoes about this. It, this is actually coming down on us and we sit there smug like it's not happening and like it's never going to affect us. And I guess the numbers are right, it may not. But those couple in, uh, that couple in Houston, it happened to them. Why are you different? And the military comes down and they want to beat on you and the government wants to beat on you and the Democrats want to take away your guns. There's always an attack and attack and attack. And we have a study. Inside this conundrum of the military consequence you live in, the occupation, and this interesting little right that they can't actually destroy. In international law, they can't destroy the constitutional aspects so they can kind of erode it, uh, is you have a right to bear arms. And a study comes out at the time that they're able to attack you and you feel helpless and don't do anything to stop it in the first place. No different than the cop can make this stuff up and you think you'd have a scruple to not, you have to have a scruple too to go down to stop it and you don't. The study shows that concealed carry permit holder break laws far less than the cops. What am I saying here? Well, we can go ahead and laugh about that. No, this is a serious thing. The cops underneath the license commit more crimes that are think they can commit more crimes than people that are now forced to register their weapon, which was used to go against the very government that's going to attack them, and they have the right not to be known against that enemy. None of you argued this one. Not an argument, you just present it. There's an equity case. They don't have a right to infringe. They're prohibited, right? You don't ask them. You don't sue them for damages. No, you go on equity principles. You say there's no, no law that allows this, so we're going to use equities to, to, to enforce the right against you. A study shows that concealed carry weapon holders break law less than cops. The cops are the professionals, you know. But see, this ties into the bigger problem I keep telling you about. Look at the reality. Stop memifying this stuff. And then when you see the reality, if you don't respond, you could be the next victim of it. Or your loved ones. Or your neighbors. Guess what? Maybe you won't be able to. They're gone. You won't be able to borrow their lawnmower next week. I, I mean, I, titles are just. I really. So I was thinking about this. I really need to make these, develop these stories a little bit more. But you know, the title is all I need to see. It truly is. I could read this stuff, and yeah, some of the stuff is important, and some of it's truly important. Where there, and I do this, some of that myself. I try to read for you the very importantest part, so that we can get. I can go show you the principle. But this title is all I need need here. Now, what would you do with it? Well, you go, it's a study, it's a finding. It shows the cops need more constraints despite their certification. It pretends what happened in Houston. And everywhere else we found the, 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 the shooters. And this is getting back to me. I just didn't even think about it until again. I just kind of put this out of my mind. This is where I started. I was almost a victim of this fabrication of a crime to get you out and put five cops pointing their guns at you, and, and then they start yelling at you to do things you can't do all at once, like, come here, go away, get in your car, stand up, lay down. Next thing you know, bullets are flying. That's where I start here, decades ago, folks. Otherwise, I was oblivious to all this stuff like most of y'all. It's still here, and it's worse. And you go to comply, you're a law-abiding citizen. I don't need to say that. You just are. Well, so they took it away from you, so you have to go register with the government to let you know that you can carry concealed. Like, that changed something. 
And yet when you isolate these people by permit and do the study, you find out that they're, they do far less crime than even the people that are given the job of enforcing the laws. And then you miss the point that they were given that and also an immunity, which they now take over because they're not too smart and not too psychologically stable, and they expand that license they give, and they to the point they're in your society, they're breaking the law more than you are who are law-abiding. We say, oh, we know that. Well, it's time to stop it, folks. Okay, you know it. Big deal. I know lots of stuff. We're contemplating our navels. Let's go out and get it done. But you, you start seeing the extraction method here, the rendering. See, the government wins no matter which way they do until you step in and stop it. And you're going to be at risk when you start to expose some of this. But I've asked you to do it without jeopardy. There's no. You get to do certain things when you start understanding the battlefield that really makes it hard for them. A lot of it's just making a public record of things. You don't hear, see, they want to regulate the self-help non-criminal. They don't re sufficiently regulate the official criminal because it's not profitable in some way to that thing, that organized criminal syndicate. It doesn't live by law. It lives by policy, police policy. Policy, police. It's, it's just a grammatical change in one letter at the end of the word. Policy is not law. And yet you live under it. And you're subject to this arbitrary and capricious response. And you have all the evidence in, the, in, the, in, the, uh, in these reports, in these news articles, to start doing something to stop it and make the place a more peaceful place that it has not. You have to understand that they can't keep the peace if they're the ones breaking the law and they're the, well, they're the professional. They can't make money unless they are breaking the law. And that's the other thing. They can't, and it does not money. Again, their consideration, consideration is quite a wide number of things. If it's anything given in, as a trade for a deal or an agreement or anything, it, it's considered consideration. It doesn't have to be money. It could be a promise. It could be the forbearance. It could be all kinds of stuff. It's really interesting what we have available to us once we understand. So you don't have to get all pigeonholed and, and look at one thing and put a title on it and then condemn it all. No, that, 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 to me that just shows ignorance and that shows that we're not going to we're not going to be able to have capacity to understand what's up against us. And these people are trained and have set up a, a system that's trained to harm us. And nothing gets happened that's not going to profit them. So I'm going to tell you, look at the Senate again, where they condemn the war crime and you take away all your wealth. They mean to impose austerity. They mean to impose sustainable um, uh, uh, shared prosperity, which is sustainable debt. They impose that on you because I know that because they're not going to want you to have wealth and all the derivative economy that derives from, from raw material production. That's what the Senate wants. They say that's in the benefit of the state. Now, that's a lunatic talking. When you see a lunatic talking, you can't argue with them. You have to go take the matters in your own hands and say, no, that isn't to the benefit of the state, because it doesn't benefit me. So, what pops up this week, but something that would benefit you if you knew about it, but that can't be modified, actually, that can't be denied, that the government can't control. And I looked at it and said, well, that's likely not what the occupier is going to allow to you, but you need to know about it. And this happens to be a, moving into now things that are done without pharma, without government license, without the license of the occupier, the military force that uses your woe and harm and the harm they do and the, the side effects that they put on you. The, they, they profit. This whole system is an economic, military, uh, commercial occupation against you. And that occupation for them is their business. And we hear these little stories that there is things out there. It does take a little bit of technology, but they're not able to be regulated at some level once they're proven to be useful. And then you also find out they're also not done in the United States. Again, more clues as to what to expect as long as we keep silent. That we, For those of you that are into the, moving in now into some little healthy health things uh, about how they keep you from being healthy, they do the worst stuff to you. Worst stuff, because it's profitable, or it has some objective in national security that they haven't told you. And where do you find that? Title 50. It's all written, folks. Uh, effectiveness of photodynamic therapy in elimination of HPV-16 and HPV-18 associated with CIN-1 in Mexican women. This is an interesting study you'll get the link to. This is what you'll probably not see happening. 
But this is a very simple technology we've heard before. Uh, you would think that the, with all the power of the United States, and if you thought that they were looking for to help you or cure you, that the United States government would have been the first to find this. But no, the, the people that the United States is going to ultimately go to war on by attacking Venezuela, they're attacking all of South America because the South American people are starting to bind up together to try and force international law to keep an occupier from coming into Venezuela. We're going to watch this dynamic. It may be why the border, the wall is being built, because that's an invasion coming. No, a military one, folks, out of necessity. And that would show a far more, far of a forethought of a plan, more than the immigration. Immigration has been a cover, which I think it has been anyway, but this may point again. But anyway, getting to the, the point of the south of the border. They've come up with a technology about HPV. What did we do in the United States to come up with vaccines? And for uh, children, you give immunity to the, to the companies who don't have a, a don't produce the product that we find out they're supposed to do. That uh, HPV vaccines are now given to boys as well, and we see all the we see the detriment, the harm that's caused. That's not spoken of, but it's it's written in the product data sheet if you look. That this technique isn't a vaccine. It's a, a technique or that I've read before. You get a dye to go to that's absorbed by a tumor, and then you shine a particular light on it that the dye responds to, which either puts in just heat or actually causes chemical oxidation byproducts when the light hits the dye. They have found when you put this dye that they have into someone with these uh, cervical uh, propensities, uh, cancer propensities, and then you hit them with the, the, the light. Uh, and this is hearkening back to some technology a long time ago in the uh, 1900s to the 20s, the 30s, uh, the, uh, the doctors of which were condemned and put in jail. Uh, they This technology is showing you can use a dye, a simple dye, and a particular light to destroy cancer for HPV. You don't need a vaccine. Once you get it, you can stop it. And so you can, again, I can read through this, big words and all, you know, we, I don't do that well sometimes, and I'm doing less well every every month, it seems. Uh, just not either not interested or just um, it's not happening, folks. Uh, like I said, my time may be coming. Within 20 years, I don't know. Uh, you're going to have to carry on without me, I'm sure. But uh, so I'm not interested in reading some of these big words. I did to read the article fascinating folks how simple it can be you do need doctors to do this they do need to do it right the point is is that it doesn't take all this uh, immunity and, and fraud courts uh, to keep you from uh, and, and autism and, and whatever else uh, um, the multiple immunological attacks that the science uh, excuse me the medicine not the science the medicine happens in the United States it's allowed by the agencies and the only reason why I can see that that would be the case is because they're 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 making a war against you you're an enemy they treat you as a human, as I talked about it before. You're an animal. You're a pest animal under Title VII. I've talked all about this. In fact, this is a, Clint Richardson put that in his uh, lethal injection. I think it's the first, in the first 20 minutes he mentions Title VII. You're a, you're a pest. Man is a pest animal. And they treat you like that. The Israels, Israelis treat you like that. United UN, you, human, human, human uh, rights, humane. This is all not man or woman. This is a, a, an animal that they're talking about. And, and yet, you get people that are actually looking at this, and they come up with simple, relatively simple answers to eliminate something that the United States, because it's profit motive, will do completely otherwise, and maybe even condemn this. Effectiveness of this phytodynamic therapy and elimination of HPV uh, was printed in a couple of documents. Uh, the the study did determine the effectiveness of this phytodynamic therapy again a dye with light that goes in and causes in this case I think it, I think this is the one that caused a uh, oxygen creation which oxidized the uh, oxidized the tumor to the effect of it couldn't it affected the the uh, blood flow and so it it, it dies it, it has no way to to survive so I wanted you all to hear this part we have we have this to put up against an HPV vaccine, for those of you against vaccines, when you go to uh, attack uh, the, the revolving door of pharma with the FDA, you get to say, well, there's an alternative 
Now what am I doing? I'm saying use the alternative dispute resolution is the process they use that when you know about it, you bring the alternative that's actually the right answer, not the one of the outcome. And you say, no, we have, you don't, you don't have the right to make these vaccines mandatory. You don't have the right, especially with all the harm you show those. We do have an alternative. And you didn't investigate that. And you are commissioned, duty bound to do that so that we have the alternative. And so one of the things you have on your plate to decide about is do you produce a vaccine? You have to have a vaccine court for harm court for admitting to harm. Or do you go and look at this alternative care that would actually cure? See, so you get to come back in and take it back away. It's not going to be overnight, but without anybody doing it, you're going to get the cancer. You're going to get the injections. You're going to get the, the harm that the government intends upon you. I guess that's the other thing. When you see these other studies, they, it tells you the government, the government agencies and the people in there intend you harm. No different than the Senate. The Republicans that you think would be conservative and production-based, they intend to make a war crime. This is not a joke, folks. They collaboratively moved together to the outcome they needed. Or whatever. We don't even know what the reason was for coming to that outcome. I can tell you just from the law, they violated many, many, many things. But in the minimum for you all, when they stop, conserve public property use and withdraw raw materials production, they are attacking the foundation of your nation. It's considered a war crime. Okay, that's as simple as I can give this whole to you. Moving, continue to move about... Here we got an effective, uh, here one side out of the country, United States, they show this simple, again, it takes medical professionals to do this. You've got to inject the dye, you've got to put the light in the right spot, it's got to be the right laser, you've got to have the right stuff. But it does cure, apparently. Now, I don't know that it's 100%, but those of the ones that, are respond, that respond to this are done. Why don't we hear that here? Why is it taking this long for the Mexican doctors to find it, given the power uh, and the, and the so-called talent in the United States, again, proves that the scientists and medicine, medical profession in the United States is, is not about, it's about treatment, not cure. That's why anybody who wants to bring a cure gets attacked. A newly released GM beans toxic to human liver cells, body warns. So this is a, um, I wasn't really happy with this article because it's an, an article written to another organization, but you can go back through the article to find the originating documents to see the source information that this article speaks to that produces the, uh, the statement, the protein produced by this transgene has toxic effects on human liver cells and inter induces alterations in immune systems of laboratory animals. And there might be many mechanisms for that. A lot of the immunological things go through the gut and destroy the environment for the biome. We went through all this. I'm just bringing up this stuff to show you that for a government that wants to make war on you, they'll do this stuff. But here's an interesting thing that came breaking. I hope I can get it out here. The forced vaccinations can now legally be stopped. No control, quality control for 32 years was the story I read to you about Robert F. Kennedy and uh, Dell Bigtree. And they've made a case. They have a case number on this article. They now prove, and this is what Clint Richardson found, they prove that there's no quality control to give you what they claim they're giving you and they have a lot of these adulterants and that you can use to stop the imposition of mandatory. And so now you, if you understand what I've been saying you on how you address these things, you now have a piece of information that's uh, got a court case that says you, you cannot impose these mandatory things on me because there's not quality control. And you're going to be taken on the liability for that. And I think I mentioned in the uh, uh, Freedom Network uh, chat to Cowboy Tech is what, who, who I picked this up from. I don't know that employers or employees are going to be the proper ones to fight this because they're both vulnerable, the employees for sure. But a school... A um, child with a parent that might sue uh, for this underneath this standard might be the better one because the, 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 the young one won't actually be harmed because they can be trained homeschool while they're fighting the principle that these are not quality controlled so-called medicines. Thank you for tuning in today. I hope uh, something I said was inspiring or enlightening and makes you think a little bit more and then more importantly get in action. Grimner, thank you very much for what you do at reallibertymedia.com and all the, and all you folks at uh, UCY. Jules, thank you very much for the continued support uh, there. And uh, anybody that's moved, liking and following, like and follow, folks. Spread the broadcast around. I'll be with you next week. Tech tips or nature willing.
Well, that's another lesson. I hope with today's information you can take it to those that misbehave. From behind the woodshed, leaving his mark on the beast, this is Hal Anthony. Till next time, journey with purpose. Can of whoop ass feels like. Son, you just opened a whole case of whoop ass.